Welcome back. Now, let's get into this idea right here. Not all scores are going to be exact standard deviations of the mean score. So let's go and review real quick. For this problem part C, we wanted percentage of scores between 15.8 and 31.4, which we could do because 15.8 and 31.4 were numbers on our curve. However, what if instead I had asked you what percentage of scores are between 17 and 28? You can't figure that out with your normal curve because they're not on our number line. So that is where we can either use a Z table, which is much harder, or just type it into our calculator, which is much easier. So that's what we're going to do here. Here's the process to type it in. You're going to do second and then hit the VARS button, which stands for variables, and then there's a button, I think it's number two, called normal CDF. There is a normal PDF, we do not want that one, we want normal CDF. So when you type this into your calculator, you're gonna do the lower number, the upper number, the mean, and the standard deviation. And then hit enter a couple times to get your answer. If you have an older calculator, it's probably going to have you do the same order, but it's going to have you put commas between them. So, let's see how this works. We're going to stick with the ACT scores idea. We want ACT scores between 28 and 36. So our, we need our lower number, our upper number, our mean, and our standard deviation. So our lower number is 28, our upper number is 36, our mean is still 21, and our standard deviation is 5.2. Now before I show you how to type this into your calculator, we're just going to really quickly sketch a normal curve so you can see what's going on. So here's my mean at 21. I don't even have to sketch all the standard deviations this time. I just know I want to get all the numbers between 28 and 36. So that's going to be 28 and 36. So I want that area right there. That's what I want to find. I want to find what percentage of scores are between these new two numbers. And the calculator will do that for us. So let's go into our calculator. You will need a graphing calculator for this. So if you have your own graphing calculator or a graphing calculator app on your phone, that works. If not, you can use the one that should be on your Chromebooks. So here's our graphing calculator. We're going to go through the steps with second, VARS, and then normal CDF. So second, VARS, normal CDF number two, not PDF. And then we have our lower, upper, mean, and standard deviation, just like we had. So our lower was 28, our upper was 36, our mean was 21, and our standard deviation was 5.2. Enter, enter, and here we go, we got an answer. 0 0.0871. Got 0 0.0871. Now, to turn this into a percentage, we're going to move the decimal right two places to get 8.71%. So, only 8.71% of students get an ACT score between a 28 and a 36. Pretty small percentage. But it's a pretty small piece of our graph, too. Okay, let's try another one. What percentage of ACT students scored less than a 25.2. So for this one, I'm going to draw the picture first because this one, it helps to visualize it. So here's my normal curve. Here's my mean at 21. My, I want everything less than 25.2. So we're going to say this is about 25.2. And I want everything less than that. So I want all of this. 
everything less than 25.2. So in this case, my upper number is going to be my 25.2. Mean is still 21. Standard deviation is still 5.2. There we go. But let's talk about the lower number. Here's where normal curves tend to sometimes break reality. And here's why. You would think that the lower number for the ACT score is zero because that's the lowest that an ACT score can go. But there's one problem. On this normal curve, these lines right here actually have arrows, meaning they go on forever and ever and ever and ever and ever, which kind of breaks reality. For example, let's go back to what we drew in the last video. We drew this curve, and we wrote up here 36.6. Is it possible to get an ACT score of 36.6? It's not. The highest the ACT goes is 36. So this isn't realistically possible, but we still make a point on the curve because these lines can keep going forever and ever. So technically, these lines can go into the negatives, even though we would never get a negative ACT score. So when we want to tell our calculator to do a lower number, we're actually just going to pick like the lowest number we can think of kind of thing. In this case, a really big negative number. So we can do like negative 1 million. And we're telling our calculator to do everything from way over here at negative 1 million up to 25.2, which is big enough because these arrows go forever so we can just make it a really big number. So now we know what to type into our calculator. Let's go in here and try it. So we wanted second vars, normal CDF. Our lower was negative 1 million, or just a really big low number. Our upper was 25.2. Our mean was still 21. Standard deviation is still 5.2. Enter, enter. And we get 0 0.7903. Move it to the right, too, so we can make it a percentage. And we get 79.03%. So 79, about 79% of students will score less than a 25.2 on the ACT. Okay, let's get to this one. I'm going to have you try this one on your own, but let's start by doing the sketch together. So this one we want, what percentage of ACT scores are greater than 27? So here's our normal curve. Our mean is 21. Up here is 27. And we want all the scores that are greater than so this is going to be a pretty small percentage of scores. That's a pretty small area. So in this case, we can see in this picture, our lower number is going to be 27. And we want our upper number to be a really big number, like because that arrow keeps going forever and ever. So we'll say this time a positive 1 million. And that will give us the area from 27 for basically forever positive 1 million. Let's try it. Second VARS, normal CDF. Our lower is now 27. Our upper is a really big number, like 1 million. Our mean and standard deviation are the same. Enter, enter. We get 0 0.1242. 0 0.1242 which we move our decimal over, only 12.42% of students get above a 27 on the ACT. Okay, this one I want you to try all by yourself. We want to get a 23 or above. So sketch your curve, write out what your numbers would be, and type it into your calculator. 
and then come back to see how you did. Check what you got with what I got. I got 35.02% of students get above, uh, get a 23 or above. Okay, last one. If 875 students at MRHS take the ACT, about how many students would you expect to get a score above 23? Well, we have 875 students, and I would expect that 35.02% of them would get above a 23. But your calculator doesn't like percentages, so we're going to turn it back into our decimal. And we just type that in, 875 times my decimal, and we get about 306 students. So we would expect about 306 MRHS students to get a score above a 23. Okay, so that is everything about normal CDF on your calculator. We need one more video for this lesson to talk about the inverse norm function on your calculator, and then we'll be done.